So um, this Thursday, we are returning back to blended learning. I know that some parents had requested that their, their kids were remote and they wanted to go back to um, blended or in-person learning. At this point, um, I did submit the request, but the chancellor is not letting anyone who is remote go back into blended or in-person learning. They are trying to um, meet the expectations for testing in middle schools, um, adding those additional students of 20% of, of staff and students being tested weekly. Um, they're not allowing any additional students to opt back into blended or remote learning. So if your child is remote, they will remain remote at this time until the end of the year. Those students who are blended um, will report back to school on Thursday, February 25th at 8.40 a.m. Um, that's all students, whether you're A or B, will report back to on Thursday and they will be dismissed um, at 2.20 p.m. Um, we are working on having our school open four days a week, uh, but it may be open three days a week. Um, we're waiting for um, approval from the superintendent's office and also ensuring that we have enough staff and enough space to cover students for the maximum amount of days. Um, in order to return, all of our students had to complete a mandatory COVID consent form. Everyone will be tested. We're gonna test 20% of staff and students on a weekly basis, and students will not be allowed in the building without it. So if your child is scheduled to return back to blended learning, they must have that consent form. We've been calling um, everyone all day. I think we're missing about um, 10 to 15 forms. So those parents have been notified. Um, finally, of course, we're going to main social, maintain social distancing and safety and continue deep cleaning in the building. Um, the big idea for everyone that's on this call, whether or not your child is in person or um, blended or remote, is that the schedule will be changing on Monday. The marking period ends on Friday. And based on us returning back in person, we will have a new schedule. We have tried um, to keep all of the teachers the same for most students and also to see, keep the Google Classroom the same. Some students were changed who went remote or um, their classes had to be changed. But for the most part, um, what we're really proud of and what we've been able to do this school year is to keep our kids with the same teachers for the majority of the year. So the schedule will be updated um, because kids are returning. Uh, but we did try to keep your child with the same teacher and the same Google Classroom. So you'll receive an update or a communication if your child's class has changed. And then everyone will have a new schedule that will be posted on our website, www.vanyc.org, and in Google Classroom um, for Monday um, when we begin our new marking period. So um, here's an opportunity that uh, I just found out about this year. I actually asked them to come out and speak to our kids. So they're gonna come out, um, well, come out on Zoom uh, on Tuesday. I thought this, this program was really amazing. Um, NYU College and Career Labs allows you to apply for your child to be a part of this program. Um, the application I think closes uh, in April, they will also walk you through the application. If your child is admitted into this program in seventh or eighth grade, they go over the summer to the College and Career Lab at NYU. This program is a six year program. So throughout high school, they're gonna be able to take college classes at NYU and earn college credit. And they're gonna have access to their labs and different learning experiences. So I think this is an amazing um, program and an amazing opportunity. I'm encouraging all my seventh and eighth grade parents to apply and hopefully get our kids into this program and allow them to meet people from all over, other kids from all over the city, be exposed to a university um, campus at a very prestigious college and also earn college credit. And it's over six years. So it's gonna prepare them for high school and um, college and it's a very unique opportunity. So uh, on Tuesday, if you have time, you can log into the student assembly. Um, we will also post the application on our webpage and in our Google Classroom. So just uh, read it, learn about it. And um, if you think that it's something 
uh, that would be beneficial, which I definitely do, uh, please do apply. And we're here to support you with the application process. So turning it over to Mr. Bailey's uh, high school information. Good afternoon, everyone. So as you know, the high school application process is underway. Um, our high school applications uh, must be completed by March 1st. Um, so that is the form on my schools. Ms. Simmons is available and her information is at the bottom there. If you need support, um, you can go ahead and um, take that information down and Ms. Harris can put it in a chat. Also, we have auditions for LaGuardia. So that is a separate application. That is if you want to do art, you want to do dance, um, you want to do instrumental music or vocal, um, you will have to submit an audition for that. So the application for that is also March 1st, but the um, audition submissions are due on March 8th. Next slide. Um, Mr. Bailey, I think Ms. Simmons just logged in if she had anything to add. Okay. Um, I'm trying to turn my camera on now. <laughs> You probably have another window open with your camera on, so it's not gonna let you turn it on. Do okay. Um, um, I did wanna add, um, well, if it's okay with you, I can give the, the applications out in person just to support the families further. Okay, so that will work. So eighth grade parents, if your child is in person or blended, then they will get it in school. If your child is not in person or blended, we'll give you a time frame uh, for you to come up and pick up the application. It will be one hour um, after arrivals, which it would be around 9.30 and one hour before dismissal, which would be 1.20, um, just so that we can ensure social distancing. And then we'll also give extended hours. So we'll send that out via Kimbo. And if you're having trouble filling it out um, using the My Schools, then uh, you can get the application, fill it out, and then return it so that Ms. Simmons could support you in entering it in, and we'll Kimbo that out this afternoon, this evening with the times and in the morning. So let me just um, take a note of that. Or Mr. Bailey, or Ms. Harris, can you take a note of that so we could let the parents know what time on Kimbo? All right. And Ms. Simmons, you'll be available to um, distribute the, the, app, the high school applications, right? Yes, absolutely. Because currently I only have 45 students who have completed their high school application. It doesn't mean that they are not working on it, but those are the amount of students who submitted it. And I wanna ensure that we have 153 students. I wanna ensure that they all are completed. Okay, so parents, this is a very unique opportunity. Um, they don't, there's no report card grades, there's no attendance. So this is your opportunity to get your child into a school that they may not necessarily have access to because a lot of the criteria has been relaxed. Um, so we will have the wellness team reaching out to eighth grade uh, families. In the past, we've, also, we've always had 100% of our families um, complete the high school application. We want to continue that. We don't want your child placed anywhere because the application was not completed. We want to make sure that your child, our kids, are placed in schools that they've selected. So we're going to be um, reaching out to the eighth grade senior parents via the wellness team to support and complete an application because we only have one week, basically, to get 100 applications in. So thank you, Ms. Simmons, for your ongoing hard work. And um, seniors, uh, if you're on this PTA meeting and you have any questions, just go ahead and put it in the chat. And Ms. Simmons will be monitoring the chat to answer your questions. Thank you, Ms. Harris. Okay, so our student attendance data. So as you know, we have a wellness team and each one of you is assigned a case manager. That case manager gives you a call on a weekly basis. They do check-ins. They're gonna ask you what, uh, if there's anything we can do to support you or your um, child during this time. And they're also going to communicate updates on a weekly basis. During that time, they're also gonna be communicating about attendance. So we have started tracking our attendance intensely We've been tracking it since the beginning of the year. 
but we've been doing some intense tracking starting December 4th. And I just wanted to share some data with everybody um, just to show how much progress we have made. So as you can see at the bottom here, we had about 7% of our students um, really, really not coming. And we're working really, really hard. But of course, this is a cumulative average. And it's going to take a little while for these students to get above this level here of 49%. Um, I also want you to see the trend of, as you go further to the right, our students in the 50, 70% are moving to the 80, 90%. And we're getting more students in our 90 to 100% attendance rate category. Um, so the wellness team is going to continue to call. They're going to continue to communicate. They're going to continue to ask if, if there's anything wrong, if there's something that's stopping you from not uh, logging into class, if there's any issues with technology, because our goal is for all of our students to have 95% attendance or higher. Next slide. All right, so we're super excited about our iReady. So for those of you who do not know, iReady is a diagnostic assessment that we take three times a year, in the fall, in the winter, and in the spring. So that helps us to determine whether at the beginning of the year where your child is as far as their reading and math level, levels, um, and it sets a goal for the middle of the year and the end of the year. So we took the second diagnostic right before break, and the data shows us or lets us know whether or not your child has met the expected goal for the middle of the year also lets us know what your child needs for the rest of the year. So it's very important. If you look on the slide here, we have our completion rates um, and they are a little bit below 90, but our goal is to have 100% of our students to be completed the diagnostic by March 2nd, which is next week. So if your child has not uh, completed the diagnostic, you'll continue to get the Kindle messages in the morning. Just please have a conversation make sure that they complete it and make sure they try their best because this data is going to be used to help them um, for the rest of the year. And it's also part of the promotional criteria. So we have to show progress. And this is one way that we're showing progress um, by seeing whether or not your child has made met their goals and, and um, is making progress. So this is very important in terms of promotional criteria as well. So. All right, so some students, um, they completed the assessment. So you may have a child that says, hey, I completed the assessment, um, but the teacher will have a conference or a conversation with the child if they were rushing. So there are two different flags that a, a student may receive on their report. And if the teacher sees these flags, they're gonna ask questions, they're gonna try to investigate deeper. This pretty much means that the child rushed and did not take their time. So of course we want all our kids to take their time and do their very best so that the lessons that they get in iReady are really aligned to what they need and it's gonna really support them. If a student got a red flag, that means that that skill level is not accurate at all and they had to be reset. And the teacher will be communicating with you and the child if this has to happen. It has not happened often, um, but if it has to happen, you will be no, you'll be hearing from your child. So if they say they did it and they didn't, um, do reach out to, to the child's teacher and just uh, make sure that they didn't rush. Thank you. So after the diagnostic, we're going to be um, sending out these reports very, very shortly. So here's a sample of a parent report. So on the left side, there are two re rectangles here because there are two assessments. So on the first rectangle, you see where the student placed in the beginning of the year. And the second one would be the, um, how they place the second time around, okay? So if you notice, this student made a lot of progress here, went up 83 points um, from one test to the next. It also lets us know that this student was placed, um, I can't see it. I know this student was placed at, I think, a fourth grade level. It just says needs improvement here. But now it says approaching sixth grade. So this student is almost on the sixth grade level, and this is a sixth grade student. If you notice on the right, it breaks it down by category on what the student may need support in, whether it's vocabulary, whether it's phonics, whether it's comprehension with literature or informational text like science or um, social studies and history. And we're gonna look at a math example as well. Wait, can we, did, I don't know if you said this, if you said about the bar and the arrow and them meeting their goal. 
Yes. That's your box? Oh, okay. So on, on the parent report, we, we can, you can see the amount of progress that was made. Um, we will be communicating with you about the exact goal because the exact goal is, is not in the parent report. Um, but the teachers will be communicating about that just to make sure that you know whether or not your child reached the goal, but you will definitely see if they made progress. Um, that arrow up means that the student made progress. The math one is exactly the same. If you notice this student made, same student made a little less, well, made some progress, but not as much progress as, as he did in reading. So this, as, as a teacher, this is gonna help our teachers to try to figure out what's going on, to try to differentiate instruction to make sure that this child is successful by the end of the year. And as you notice on the right again, there are different categories for math and it lets you know whether they're on level, whether they need improvement or whether they're far below in each of those categories. And it's gonna give you suggestions, discuss the, the results with your child, right? Reach out to the teacher and what you should be doing. Um, as well. And just, you know, I already is an expectation that our kids are passing two lessons in reading and two lessons in math. And what we have been noticing is the students that are consistently using I ready are the students who are reaching those goals. So it's very important that your child is on I ready consistently. Next slide. We just want to share some, some, some data from the IREADY assessment so far, even though we're not done. So in the beginning of the year, this is the reading, we only had 8% of our students on level. All right, so we are moving up and now we have grown and we have 30% of our students on level. So we're looking towards the end of the year, increasing that even more. Um, and if you notice the next slide in the math, we had 10% on level and 18% on level now. So they said it's gonna be working really, really hard in math to make sure that they make progress. Um, and we should notice we have, a, we have less students in the below level. So the students are moving along, but we're expecting more students to be on level towards the end of the year. And of course, this information is gonna help your teacher, your child's teacher to help your child to make sure that they're on level or making progress towards being on level. Okay, so um, we are um, at the end of the marking period. Um, the marking, this marking period, which is the first marking period, it was particularly long because we wanted students to have more than enough time to learn what they needed to learn and to be able to complete assignments. It ends this Friday. Um, this week, students should still be attending classes, um, but in addition, students have time to make up assignments that they're missing. In your students, your child's Google Classroom, each teacher has posted um, a document that has links for your child to go in and make up any missing work. Um, so it's all in one place, it's organized for each student and all missing assignments are due by this Friday. The grids were actually shared before we went on break. So they had time over break and now they have this week. And then our spring parent teacher conference is going to be March 10th and 11th. Just like we did before, you're going to have an opportunity to sign up with your child's teachers. And during that time, um, report cards will be distributed and the iReady data will also be shared with you. And you'll have an opportunity to talk to your child's teacher about um, what their strengths are and what their areas of improvement are. And the teacher will go over that iReady report as well. And then um, if your child has any issues with technology, um, please make sure you let your wellness person know. We've been very, very proactive. We've been delivering technology door to door to some families. Um, some of you have come up with your technology. Our technology team has been awesome. Just make sure that all of our students have what they need to learn. And thank you for those of you who completed the headphone, headphone survey. Um, they are being distributed for students who indicated that they needed them. Okay, this is um, Ms. Green or Ms. Cooper. We're, we're, well, now Ms. Ashley is on. Ms. Um, she, Ms. Ashley? I just saw her log in. And Ms. Green? She's not feeling too well, so I'm doing yeah, it. Ms. She Green just needed to listen. Yeah. Okay. 
So Ms. Green, you could go and I can help you whenever you need me to help to chime in, I'll chime in. So you could start. Or you want me to start it? Um, let me try to look at it on the phone because I'm it's kind of jumbled. Hold on. <laughs> Well, Ms. Green, you know, I'll start it and then I'll let you explain it. So parents, um, a couple of weeks ago, we launched a, a, a parent survey through our um, through Outlook and we had about, about 15 to 18 parents respond. So we asked, in order to determine how we can best support you, we have created a VA virtual parent engagement survey and we wanted you guys to let us know what type of activities that will support you and your family. So what you said is what's on the graph. So Ms. Green, can you see number four? It's gonna be hard for her to read it, um, Ms. Cooper, because they're all on one slide. So you're probably gonna have to go over it. But I just wanna give a shout out to the, um, the parents for developing the survey to get the feedback and how they spend the Title I funds. Um, so Ms. Green, if you had anything you wanted to say overarchingly about the survey, you could, and then Ms. Cooper could go over the results if you can, if they're too small to see. Um, I have it. I have it up on the phone now. Um, it says, virtual events you are most interested in participating in. Um, the top choice on that one, which is the blue, came up for virtual cooking class. Um, the next one was virtual Zumba, which is the purple. From there, we have the virtual parent book club. I like the book club personally. <laughs> um, what's the next one? Next one, next one, next one. Um, virtual arts and crafts. Oh, wait, I skipped one. Sorry, sorry. After the virtual book club, it was a, a tie with the virtual parent book club and a virtual family game night. Um, and then we have virtual arts and crafts. We have vir virtual Zumba, um, fitness, yoga. I said that one already, sorry. And then the other is just 1%. I guess they was undecided on what they wanted. And then number five, you want me to do it or you want to do it? Um, let's see. What parent education workshops are you interested in attending? Discipline and behavior. Um, that came up with, what is that, like three people or three percent? How would that? So you go by the highest. The, the most state we wanted was academic support at home. And we actually... Um, oh, you want to go in order. Okay. We have a workshop coming up with that, like Google Classrooms. Okay. So the top one, first one in order, it would be academic support at home. The next one, purple, would be home buying. From near gray that would be stem science technology education mm -hmm. yeah we're just going to focus on the top three miss green those are gotcha. the top three that we're going to focus on for this year okay so to, um, add, to add on to that we we we're, we're setting up workshops as we speak i know um we have some dates in march that we want to actually do a, we want to do a um, start a book club, but we first and, and more importantly want to support parents at home with um, Google Classroom, uh, iReady Diagnostics, how to read it, how to su get support um, at home learning with your with your students, and also um, having yeah, take someone, this, take this. someone come in and to talk about what, um, no. entrepreneurship, which is the purple one. So we have someone coming up to come in into our um, do a virtual workshop with us, and we also have. Um, staff and teachers willing to do um, workshops on STEM, um, um, navigating technology, and also immigration, uh, um, information with immigration, and also with the guidance counselors and that support, that whole support team, the social and emotional learning. So we have now uh, workshops in the works now as we, the dates um, 
roll over. We'll definitely put you, you know, let you know when those um, workshops will, will happen. Okay, Ms. Cooper. I believe if are we are we adding any more? I mean, number six um, was another important question. How would you recommend, how likely would you recommend our school to a friend of a colleague? And we got 14 um, responses. And, and, and actually, I think everyone said they would recommend our school to someone else. So um, just to let you know that we are still in, in our um, campaigning for kids for next year. So we will definitely, we appreciate all your support. Let people know that we are still, I think the middle school um, application of processes this week, let, let, let your um, friends and neighbors know that we are still taking kids at, um, um, in our school. Fifth, income and fifth grades, I'm sorry, in our school. Okay, so thank you um, to all of you that filled out the NYC Family Experience Survey a few weeks ago. It was posted in Google Classrooms. We sent it. We can wrote it out. So this is a survey that all students in New York City um, took. So I just want to briefly go over where um, some of our family responses were. So this compares us to the whole New York City. So for student safety, we were at 95% um, favorable. There was a group of questions. So we're above the city in that. For technology, we were at 93%. Um, I think this would be higher if we gave it today um, because virtually 100% of our students do have working technology. And whenever there's an issue, we're always addressing it, um, making sure that students have the tools that they need to learn. For school supports for families, we're at 89%. That's four points above um, New York City. And then for student learning, we're at 72%, but that's our greatest strength. We're 14 um, points above the city in that area. So that's just a testament to the work that our teachers have been doing with students, making sure that they're engaged, making sure that they're logging in. If you can continue to support us in this area, um, and like um, we said, we're always looking to improve and to make sure that we're giving our students the best because we truly believe that they are the best students in NYC and they deserve the best when it comes to their education. Right. So Ms. Green, Ms. Well, Dr. Lee, do you want to say start this? Ms. Green? I'm here. Okay, so you could talk about this Title I, how much money, and this is based on this parent survey. That's what the graph is, is telling us, parent feedback. I'm not sure about that one. Can somebody else do that? <clears throat> sure, go, go back and tell us. So um, parents, Title I, um, spending the parents uh, have, uh, Autonomy in how they spend 1% of the Title I funds. The majority of our Title I funds goes to hiring additional teachers to ensure we're able to maintain smaller class size. Uh, the 1% that uh, parents uh, are in control of deciding how it's spent is $2,189. Um, this money has to be spent to educate or support parents in engaging in their, their child's education. And so um, we just wanted to let you know about how much funds we have and how the PTA or Title I plans on spending the funds. I think that once they have decided on the exact allocations, they'll send the report out to all of the parents. But I was really proud in the way that they were able to gather information through the survey. So we know exactly what parents want and how we're going to spend the money um, that will help us engage parents more. So we just wanted to give you an update. We do have um, the spending deadline, which is quickly approaching. I believe it's in two weeks. So we'll have to make a decision on how we plan to spend the funds within the next two weeks. And if you have feedback or you want to reach out to your PTA or Title I, they're gonna put their emails in the chat and you can email them directly because they are in control of how this money is spent uh, with your feedback. So Ms. Green and um, Ms. Taylor, put your, put your 
email addresses in the chat so that parents who have questions or need more information about the Title I or have suggestions, they can contact you directly. I mean, Ms. Moore, Ms. Taylor. Ms. Moore and Ms. Green, put your um, emails inside of the chat and parents, you can contact them directly about the spending. Okay, so events and updates. I'm very happy to and, and proud to announce that this Friday, February 26th, it's our oratorical Black History Month oratorical competition. Right now we have about 13 kids that are in our competition. Flyers went out with the Google link and the information for our assembly that's gonna be this Friday. We would definitely send you out a reminder. So please come out and support our students. They've been working very hard um, putting this together, doing their speeches, practicing. And also congratulations to our um, last month Spell and Beat winners. Hariano Joseph came in first place and Tyler Hodges came the runner up. And also thank you to our participants that participated, um, Jonas Tejada Canton, Ariana Munro, Shiloh Atkinson, Heaven and Nevaeh Camp. And that's just, that's just another flyer up with our updates, letting you guys know about our Black, His uh, Black History Month oratorial competition this Friday, that we definitely send out information and remind you guys to log in and support our students. And once again, congratulations to our participants, Heaven, Ariana, Tyler, Harvignano, Nevaeh, Shiloh, and Jonas. Congratulations for your participation in our spelling bee. I'm not sure if I saw Ms. Matheborn. She's not in. She just... Okay. All right, so we have our, our VA student government, which uh, Tyler and Heaven and they are also a part of, and they are sponsoring our Village Academy. First, they, they sponsored an amazing event for Valentine's Day that they did the form and they got the music uh, suggestions together. And now this is their second event, which is the Black History Month Arts Competition. So our student government, they meet with me on a bi-weekly basis and they come up with ways to improve the school. And this is how they want to celebrate Black History Month. So if you're an artist or your child's an artist, please support them by um, participating in the art competition and send your artwork to Miss Massup. It could be a portrait, it could be graffiti art, the portrait of a famous African-American, graffiti art um, on a famous saying or quote from a, a famous African-American, or an original piece of art that shows a uh, Black pride. And the artwork is due uh, by February 26th. So you can do it digitally, or you can draw it on paper and um, take a picture of it and send it out. And if you need art supplies um, in order to participate, just send Ms. Massip an email or email myself and uh, we'll, we'll get an art supply package ready for you to pick up if you would like to uh, participate. So, okay, you guys, this, I'm so excited about this. This year, we launched our Meet Your Future series. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So every month, our students get an opportunity to read real life, well, if they're professionals, but real professionals of color, how, and they come in and explain to our students, our scholars, how, and, and share their personal journey, how they put themselves on a path to success and cho chose the careers that they did. So in the, um, and previously we had a, a doctor come in, Dr. Thompson, a, geri a geriatric, if I'm saying it right, a surgeon, a weight loss surgeon. He came in uh, a month later, the next month we had a, a FBI agent to come in and explain to our students um, his career choice and how he, his personal journey and how he got to where he's at. So this next month, I'm proud to announce and with our feature present 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 presenter, sorry, our feature presenter, Ms. Ashley Nicole Adams. She's a mechanical engineer stationed in Hawaii. She's a U.S. Navy um, lieutenant. So please join us Friday, March Friday, March 19th at 11 a.m. during our student assembly as um, Ms. Adams talked to our students about her career choice and how she placed herself on a path to success. So please join us. And every month we will showcase and spotlight 
a professional to um, th that will come in and speak to our students. So this is something I'm super excited about. Student government came up with the idea to spotlight different student artists every month. And this is the first artist that we spotlighted. Uh, when I saw this artwork, I, I thought that Ms. Massap had sent me um, artwork from online. This is one of our students who created this artwork, this original artwork from Rihanna Sid Barrymore. Um, I'm so inspired by this work. The first one is a, a, a portrait that represents a Black Lives Matter movement. Then she used graffiti to do her name. Um, and then the last one is a collage, again, supporting a Black Lives uh, Matter movement. So these are all original digital pieces of art um, that show What's happening today is culturally relevant and it's inspiring and it's done by our students. So I'm just super proud of it. Just check our website and uh, follow us on social media. And every week we're going to be featuring um, different student artists and we're gonna show students how they can use art, social media to make change uh, in their community and even in the world. So. Let's give some love to uh, Rihanna Sidbury Moore, an amazing young artist. Super proud of her. And stay tuned for our next um, student artist spotlight. So this is another um, opportunity that was provided to our students. Um, we are going to post this fly. I think we already posted in Google Classroom. Your child can sign up to these different um, workshops. There was, there's one more left. We actually got it today and there's only one more left, but they can learn about careers and sports with pro soccer players. So I, I know a lot of our kids like soccer. All they have to do is register and they'll be logged on with kids all around the city to learn about careers and sports with pro soccer players. And um, now that we're signed up for this opportunity, um, every month we're gonna get a list of workshops that our students can log into and take ownership of their own learning and their own future. And parents, you're encouraged to log in as well so that you can have conversations with your children about different careers and different opportunities. So if your child loves soccer, make sure that they log in, they sign up and they log in and it's after school from 4.30 to 5.30, they have the opportunity to meet a soccer player. So we, before we go to student of the month, we have YMCA, um, Ms. Bowden on the Zoom. So Ms. Bowden, if you have anything that you'd like to share, please feel free before we get into our student of the month. Yes, good evening, everyone. My camera's coming on. Hello, how are you guys? Um, so uh, as Ms., uh, excuse me, as Dr. Lee uh, mentioned, I am Danisha, Ms. Danisha, the program director for the YMCA. I'm just here just to, you know, share some information um, and highly encourage you to hopefully enroll uh, your child or children into the program. Um, just to give you a little bit about what we have going on. Uh, we do meet uh, via Google Classroom um, Monday through Friday from 2.20 to 3.30. Uh, there we do various activities uh, with our literacy club. So we do spoken word. We do arts and culture club. Um, we also are starting our STEM club uh, next Friday, March 5th. Um, we also started today uh, sixth grade math and literacy tutoring. So if you would just want your uh, child to be part of the program for just tutoring and they are in the sixth grade, they'll be able to enroll in the program and just do that. We also have teen program, which are two teen clubs we have, Leaders Club and um, Teens Take the City. Um, that is Tuesdays and Thursdays. They'll be able to join in on that if they like as well. Um, and that's from 3.30 to 4.30. So we try to have, we're trying to have just a variety of things to be able to meet the needs of the students who like to engage. Most of our activities are more fun and engaging just to kind of help them get through this, full, you know, this pandemic and what the challenges they may be experiencing um, and take their mind off of things and have some fun. Um, there are other activities that we have, but it's like a list of things. We do a lot of SEL, 
Uh, we try to tweak it into like icebreakers, actual engaging activities um, where they can do like community building, but within the community of the program with, you know, who's partaking in the program. Um, and they're actually having a pretty good time. Um, I'm amazed at how, how well they've adapted to the remote environment virtually. So we're just trying to help them get through that and make it a little bit more fun. Um, so yeah, hopefully I can share my information in the chat. Um, and Dr. Lee, I, oh, Ms. Cooper, can I send you the flyer to share with the families as well? Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay, because on the flyer, we have QR codes where you can just, uh, whatever device you use, using your phone, you can uh, put the camera to it and it'll generate the application right then and there. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible to complete that as well. Okay. Thanks, Ms. Bowden. I think the application is also on our website. So uh, www.vanyc.org, where you go to find all things VA, including a video of this PTA meeting. So drum roll, please. The moments that we have all been waiting for. <laughs> and shout out to Ms. Cooper for spending time making all of these presentations each month. She finds a different theme each month. This is her, this is her creative genius going on right here. So turning it over to the VA family. We have our wonderful teachers supporting as always. So go ahead, Ms. Cooper and VA family. Let's celebrate our students and their excellence. So we have Ms. Mayer, Mr. Dalton, Ms. Georges, and I know Ms. Floristow is translating, but we have Ms. Floristow. We also have our guidance counselor, Ms. Ms. Um, Simmons. So if each one of you would like to take a grade and let's get the ball rolling. So next slide. And if you guys don't say anything, we're gonna have to put you on the spot. <laughs> so who would like to start with sixth grade? Drum roll. Ms. Mayer, Mr. Dalton. Floor stuff. Yes, I can do sixth grade. All right. Thank you, Mr. Dalton. Sure. So proud to announce from Six Dynamite, our students of the month are Albietti Urena and Albietin Urena. Woo! From Six Warriors, we have Diana Lopez and Aaron Maldonado. <laughs> From Six Immaculate, we have Shiloh Atkinson and Kwasan Brown. And from Six Believers, we have Jeremy Bastardo and Reminique Patnet. Ooh. And from Six Leaders, we have Christian Sakish and Bryce Cordoba. Ooh. And um, the students are on. When you guys, for your grade, unmute yourself and you could clap. And when, when we get to your grade, unmute yourself and give yourselves a round of applause or your, whatever accolades you want to do. There you go. I hear it. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> All right. Next one. Okay, I'm not really. Um, it's next still sixth grade. Oh, there's more. One, two, three. No, that was it for the sixth grade slide. Go to the next slide. Next slide. Seventh grade. So who wants to seventh grade? I'll go seventh grade. All right. All right. So for seventh grade, seven astounding, we have Johanna Bonilla and Angel Vasquez. Woo! <laughs> um, let's see. For seven fearless, we have Heaven Kant and William Desindo. All right. Um, seven <laughs> guardians, we have Sarah Hernandez and Brian Marshall. For seven legendary, we have Jesus Williams and Carolina Carpio. And last but not least, for seven invincible, we have Dante Bradshaw and Cynthia Alfaro. Woo! Congratulations, seventh grade. Next slide. I'll take eighth grade. Right. Hi, everyone. Hey, Ms. Georges. So um, don't mind me because I'm like, I got to look at the screen. So for eight ambition, we have Tavon Thompson and Kalia Banner. For eight legendary, we have Christian Graves and Rayshawn McPherson. 
for eighth grade, um, eight unique, we have Kalia Augustine. And for seven, eight royalty, we have Anna Raffaella Espanol. <laughs> Okay. I'm on eighth grade. Okay, Miss Georges. Oh, we have more. Okay. Yeah. Eight for dear. We have um is it Leroy Lori Lopez? Um Lardy, sorry. Um, <laughs> for eight courageous, we have Jordan Smith and Jonathan Tavares. And for eight ingenuous, we have Egypt Sanders and Kimberly Martinez. Yay! Science. Okay, I can do science. So for six dynamite, we have Albiras Urena again. Ooh. And Anna Rafaela Espanol, Espanol, I'm so sorry, <laughs> from 7A Royalty again, and then from 7 Legendary, Shariah Campbell. Ooh. Shariah Campbell is online now. Go, Shariah. Hey. Yes, Shariah. Hi. Yes, Shariah. Hi. Hi, Jojo. Miss Georges, did you want to do strategic reading? Of course. Thank you. <laughs> For strategic reading, we have the six leaders, Christian Avalos, um, six Immaculate, we have Tyler Hodges, and six Dreamers, we have Ariana Monroe. For seventh grade, we have seven Legendary, Jesus Williams. Um, for seven Invincible, we have Dante Bradshaw. And for seven Guardians, we have Brianna Gilmore. And for eighth grade, we have A Ambition, Christian Francis. Um, a Ingenious, we have Destiny Charles. And for eight legendary, Jordan Cadet. Yay! Shout out to my strategic readers. Ms. Harris, next slide. Oh, that was the last slide? No. I'm going to start sharing. I don't know what happened, but I can share. I think something just happened, but we, Ms. Harris just got out. You have it, Ms. Cooper? Yeah, let me, I'm bringing it up right now. All right. If you already have it up, Mr. Bell, you can share it. Yeah, Mr. B, if you have it up, because I have to now get it and make, make sure it's good. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, so for PE, we have uh, from Six Dreamers, Jeremy Bastardo again. Um, from Seven Fearless, we have Heaven Camp. And Eight Unique, we have Kobe Armstrong. So. So for music, this is Mr. Galden. I'll announce the sixth and seventh grade since I work with them. And I'll let Ms. Meyer announce the eighth grade since she works with the eighth grade. So I'm proud to announce for sixth, sixth grade, from six leaders, we have Jason Orellana. And for seventh grade, from seven legendary, we have Nandi Mabambo. Ms. Meyer, yes. would you like to read eighth grade? Oh, yeah. And for... Uh, for Eighth grade, we have Ronald Perry. Um, and then I can also do art um, since I don't think Miss Massif is on. So from Six Immaculate, she uh, it's Kalia Small. Uh, I'm sorry, these are none of my kids, so I have no idea if I'm saying their names right. <laughs> um, from Seven Guardians, Makaisra Price. And from Eight Legendary, Alika Brooks. Great job, everyone. Kalia, Kalia Small. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hey, Kalia, I didn't know you were on. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. Is 
that the last um that's the last slide so listen i'm gonna the next time we have student of the month you guys are gonna have to bring your certificates and unmute and hold them up to the camera so that we can do like a picture jeremy where's your certificate i don't know i don't have it you can, can get, get it in the mail no no not yet all right so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to you guys gonna have to get your certificates and take some selfies or something so we could post it online and brag about how awesome and excellent you guys are and post it on social media so your parents can show their friends. Like, look at my baby, they got student another month. It's on Instagram. <laughs> so we're gonna make sure um we send it out. And I hope parents, I hope that you voted today. It was the um it was a council election. Um, and that's how our school gets funding. I don't know if your kids told you, but they give us capital funding to buy additional equipment, technology. They funded our greenhouse that is going to be built, $1.5 million, on the roof um, of Village Academy in December. So make sure, I, I think polls are, are, are closing uh, in about 23 minutes, but I hope that you got to vote. And if you did, you took a picture, posted on Instagram, and tagged us on it. Um, and if you're a student of the month, this month, turn your camera on so we can do a screenshot and post it. I want to see some, I want to see some excellent faces. Also, they're doing their hair now. I got two, that's good. All right. So we're going to... When I, I, was saying, uh, I was gonna take the picture, but I'd rather have everyone. There you go. I see the hey, um, Tyler. Hi, Evans, Ebony. I see everyone. I'm gonna take a picture. Oh, hey, Tyler. 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 Hey, one, two, three, say T. Ah, I got Jeremy, why is your hand covering your face? Now we gotta do it over. Hold on, I gotta press tape. Hold on. Come on now. You I, okay, wait, 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 wait. Hello, wait. Ramonique. Hey, Ramonique. Ramonique is on? Yes. Uh she was the first name we announced. I don't see Destiny, Brianna, Soraya, Monica, Soraya, Jonas. Malai. <laughs> Let me see. Um, How your parents gonna black brag if you don't turn your camera on? Let me see. Here we go. We got that one. Thank you, Shariah. Oh, that's Wait, Shariah, just turn on the camera. Jonas. I gotta do it. Oh, there we go. All right, now now we're cooking with fire. Where's Alika? I don't see Alika. Thank right you, Kalia. Now. What are you sitting on a chair that's too short? Now I can see you. All right. Move your hand, Jeremy. <laughs> All right. There we go. Control. Print screen. All right. And where's the brothers? I see Albert, um, Al Berlin. Where's just where's the other one? The both of them got student of mine. Put them, y'all both get in it. Albert uh, and Alberice. <laughs> Urena. She's coming. Okay. <laughs> All right. You got it, Dr. Lee? Um, I'm waiting for. Oh, there they go. Now Remini ran away. Right. There she goes. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> Shariah, what happened to the light? All right. I think I got it. All right, I got you guys. All right, so check out our Twitter, our Instagram. We gotta, we, we, we about to get on TikTok. I don't know what we are gonna do on TikTok, but Village Academy is about to take Hello, over. Hello, Soraya. I see you, Soraya. All right. Soraya. Soraya. What is she like? A, a jack in the box top? If we say her name, she's going to go off camera. All right. So I'm going to talk to the student government about TikTok. I got it. I'm going to talk to the student government about TikTok. Um, Mr. Leone is going to work with student government to do Among Us. It's going to happen in March as part of our March Madness. So I got a little bit more practicing to do because I got, I want to win. I don't know how to win yet, but yes, Jonas, you need to give me some ideas. What are we going to do? <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do on TikTok. I don't know what, what our, what our angle is going to be on TikTok, but we definitely gonna be on TikTok. Maybe we're gonna have Mr. Bailey and Miss Harris do a dance competition. Miss Mayer said have a jump off. I don't know what that means. 
It's me. She, she, she had to jump off. To, oh, to go to oh, that's what you're talking about. TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> Two truths, yeah. one lie. That's not. That's what. Well, that's a game. That's not on TikTok. That's a game. TikTok, you got to do like some dancing, something like that, some singing, a skit, something like that. We're gonna do think about it. Um, <laughs> it's not just dancing. Mm. I know. You, I, you, I, if, if you like it, then you just copy the dance. If you don't remember, then you do your own. Okay. Well, thank you, Malachi. We got we got good good advice. <laughs> yeah, he has his own TikTok, but I, I I can't. I don't know if I want you guys following that TikTok. But Jonas, you're on student government, so you can give me some ideas on how to um on what we could do on, on TikTok. Okay, when we meet again. So thank you, parents. Thank you to our students. Shout out to our awesome um B A P A P T A and um. Next time, students, try to get your friends to get their parents to log in so we could get this important information and get more participation, okay? So stay tuned for our, our parent workshops. Uh, check our webpage for the recording, and thank you, everyone, for logging in. Feel free to unmute, as we always do as a VA family, and say good evening, good night, have a great night, stay safe, whatever you like, um, and then we're going to log off. So I think good night. Good night. Good night. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Have a blessed night. Adios. Tengan una buena noche. Buena noche. Buena noche. Gracias. Good night. Good night. Bye. Miss Moore, feel better. Feel better, Ashley. Thank you. Feel better. Thanks, Miss Joyce. Good night. Miss Green, you did it. it Miss Green was like, I couldn't, she couldn't find that presentation. I'm like, I check your phone. It was there. But you did it. We we it gets greater later. Yes, Miss Green. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, I, I should be the last one off, right? No, you can just end the meeting. Have a good night, everyone. All good night. right. Right in early tomorrow. Good night. All right. Okay, so for PE, we have uh, from Six Dreamers, Jeremy Bastardo again. Um, from Seven Fearless, we have Heaven Camp. And Eight Unique, we have Kobe Armstrong. So. so for music, this is Mr. Galden. I'll announce the sixth and seventh grade since I work with them. And I'll let Ms. Meyer announce the eighth grade since she works with the eighth grade. So I'm proud to announce for sixth, sixth grade, from six leaders, we have Jason Orellana. And for seventh grade, from seven legendary, we have Nandi Mabambo. Ms. Meyer, yes. would you like to read eighth grade? Oh, yeah. And for, uh, for eighth grade, we have Ronald Perry. Um, and then I can also do art. Um, since I don't think Miss Massif is on. So from Six Immaculate, she uh, it's Kalia Small. Uh, I'm sorry, these are none of my kids, so I have no idea if I'm saying their names right. <laughs> um, from Seven Guardians, Makaisra Price. And from Eight Legendary, Alika Brooks. Great job, everyone. Kalia, Kalia Small. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hey, Kalia, I didn't know you were on. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right.